Hey guys, welcome back to Zero's Hobbies, and once again, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, today we have an unboxing, and uh, this might be a little bit of a long one because of the nature of this box. It's 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 huge, and it has a lot of stuff in it. So I'm going to take my time going through each piece or each uh, sprue, things like that, um, and then you know do the uh, showcase. So today we're going to take a look at the Warhammer 40k. Uh, Leviathan box set for 10th edition. It's an empty box. <laughs> where, where are the miniatures? We're going to have to get over to the table and find out. All right, sit tight. here we are man the warhammer 40k leviathan box set the new 10th edition box set in the grim darkness of the far future there is only war as you can see it's a huge box i can barely fit it in the camera um <laughs> that's what she said but yeah it's definitely oh it's heavy and it's got a ton of minis in it so we're going to try to turn this real quick so you guys can see it i apologize for the terrible camera oh, action man. but there we go so as you can see this is nothing but models and rules chocked full of models and rules look at the amount of tyranid you get it is ridiculous there you go man that's a lot of minis in one box um let's see if we can Lift off the lid. <laughs> it's a peak of all the plastic. Come on. There we go. Give it up. We got our poster. Same thing on both sides logo or whatever artwork as soon as I opened the box you could do that plastic smell just waft it up <laughs> there is a psycho flange and we've got the dreadnought Or the Redemptor. What is this? Oh, dang it, it's on the back. I know it's a Redemptor, but it's got like long range weapons instead of uh, punchy fists. I guess this is the Screamer Killer and the Nero Tyrant. Hope you guys see this, man. This is pretty crazy. And these are supposedly these are all like press fit models, so you should be able to just slap them together. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, that's a Space Marine guy. That looks like the Rune Priest. Yeah, Rune Priest and Terminator Armor. He almost reminds me of Bjorn the Stormcaller. Or Najal the Stormcaller, sorry. Stormcaller. From the Space Wolves. You could probably turn him into that guy. Since there's no model for him. No current model for him. These Gaunts. Yeah, these are Termagants. They're different from the one in the Space Marine board game. That's kind of cool. There's too many. That looks the same. That looks like the old, the other sprue from Warhammer Space Marine. And this looks like a Terminator. Terminator. 
I know there's a Terminator Captain in here somewhere. And this is Morgant. See, that sprue is identical to the one I just showed you. Looks like in Furnace Marines. Probably should have done this in sections. <laughs> it probably would have been easier to follow. More Terminators. You guys are chonky. You should be, but, you know, we'll see. There he is. That's a Terminator captain. And Tyranid Prime. All on one sprue. More in Furnace Marines. Big double sprue. Oh, this looks like the Stern Guard veterans. Or Stern Guard, I don't, I'm not sure which one. Neurogaunts and Barb Gaunts. Another poster. Hmm. And big. This is the big book. Covers nice. Oh, it's got like a sleeve thing on it. Okay, we'll look at that in a second. And we have the instruction sheets for all the models. Oh, it gives the data cards for them. That's cool. I know that some of this has changed, you know, since the new FAQ, but that's cool that it's there. Cheering in. Their data cards. Very cool. Come on. Hmm. That seems like it's just an obligatory ad. And Space Marine decals. Dude. Hold on a sec. They have Imperial Fists. Yeah, boy. And some face walls. That's cool. Thank you, GW. I don't know if you were listening to me or somebody else, but whatever. Wow. Oh, we've got stratagem cards. That's cool. There's a ton of them. Or mission cards or something. That's cool. Never known 40k to be a, a card game, but that's okay. It's better than searching through your books, like taking forever to find one little rule in your book. Mm, got some bases. I'm sure there's more in the, in the bottom there. Ah, uh, okay. They fell out of this card box. Yeah. Oh, there's missions in there or scenarios. Looks like there's objectives. That's cool. Everything you need to play. Let me get this back in the box. Because that's where it belongs. Ooh, that's tight. <laughs> Gotta laugh at yourself, right? And what's on this side? Bases. No measuring stick and no dice. Hmm. Interesting. 
All right, let's take a look at this book. All right, let's take a look at this book real quick. Uh, oh, man, that new book feel. Look at how, first of all, how big this damn book is. This is what I mean when I say intimidating, right? Because when you introduce people to this game and you throw this big mamma jamma, or let me rephrase, when you throw down this ancient tome of knowledge, it's, it's, this is, this is intimidating. And there's no one, no one's going to be like, oh, cool, I've been waiting for a book to read. I mean, there are people who love to read, but there's a lot of 40K, but Fortunately, there's a lot of fluff in here, which is basically just history, information about the universe, everything you need to know about Warhammer, the Warhammer universe, with a, a bit of rules in there. And I know it's like 200 and something pages, maybe more, but a big chunk of it is, is fluff. And there's a small part of it that's the rules because they tried to keep it simple at the beginning. They start. They don't start changing the rules till mid game, mid mid season of these types of releases, and say, okay, well, that didn't work. That didn't work. We got to change that because usually the tournament tournaments dictate the rules. So if in a tournament someone is using the rules and it turns out to be like, wow, that's op, or that's just something we didn't know we overlooked, then they wind up changing it based on that. There's some cool Terminator artwork. We're just gonna glimpse through this real quick because I still got to read this book. Look at that piece of art. That is just awesome. Inspiring artwork, man. I'll tell you that. Hmm. Building and painting. Playing. Now the reports. You can get online, you can find tons of battle reports, not just from games. You can find them from games where actually if you find sign up for Warhammer Plus. But you can also find a ton of um battle reports from all different types of gamers and gaming groups. Oh my god, look at that knight! He's so awesome. Um and they basically, you know, they're non-biased, so they just play the game as it is. You know what I mean? And they'll tell you those are the battle reports, in my opinion, to watch. Not the games workshops are not good, but I feel like like mini wargaming studios and like and there's a bunch of them and i can't remember the names of them right now i apologize my buddy cujo from overboard dm he watches a bunch of them. he knows what i'm talking about but there there's some really good ones that are unbiased and you can really tell whether or not an army is like you know over the top or not strong enough you know and also the tournaments tell you too like when you look at the tournament results you're like okay that army struggled here here you know it, it's placed low or placed mid-range and then you look at the armies at the top and you're like did that person jimmy or use a use a hack that they found in the game rules which they most likely did not that they're doing it illegally they're just saying hey man this is i you know i'm using the rules as they're stated and then you know the, that's when the company says okay well we probably messed up there or we oh it was an oversight so let's correct it for the either for the next edition for the next faq which you know can be frustrating but it has to happen when you're dealing with a game with this involved of a rule system. And a lot of people don't like this game because they say it's overcomplicated and it's too expensive and it's this and my mom doesn't like it and my ears hurt when I hear people talk about it and there's not enough women in it and whatever. It's, there's an excuse for everything, you know what I'm saying? But my point is you do what you want to do, you know what I mean? Like I prefer... Look, if my son came to me and said, Dad, I want to play Warhammer 40K, I'd be like, great, let's do it. You know, you know, we go on the process of that. I would rather my son come to me and say, that, Dad, I want to play 40K, than the police come to me and say, we caught your son with drugs or we caught him on the street with alcohol. You know what I'm saying? I want to know my son's money is going to the right place. And yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, this is expensive. Yeah, but would you prefer your kids going you know, out on the street and spending their money on alcohol and drugs and partying. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to do that when they're in college. They're going to do that later. Let them, you know, let them be kids when they can. You know, a lot of college students eventually turn back to 40K to keep themselves occupied while they're studying. You know what I mean? So it's not, it's, it's, this is not a phenomenon. This is not a, like, this is not a, uh, 
witchcraft or anything like that. This game started in the early 80s, okay, by a very small company that owned a store that sold that, that printed or produced pewter miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, these games came from them. You know, yeah, now it's a huge corporation. A lot of you own oh, a corporate machine. So what? Every dude, everything's run by corporations. You just have to learn how to play in the game, man. You just got to learn how the, the rules work. If you don't like the price hikes, then protest. Send in letters. Send in emails saying, hey, this is you're, you're pricing me out of the game. But like I said, if you have a hobby, I, I have multiple hobbies. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I spend on all of them currently. You know what I'm saying? And, none, you know, very few of them are, are cheap. Like when I when I'm spending on 40k, I can't spend on any other hobbies. When I'm spending on my RC hobby, I cannot spend on anything else because RCs, whether you think they're expensive or not, they are. All it takes is one little bump, and your car is probably about a hundred hundred dollars worth of damage, maybe more if it's a fucking excuse my French if it's a very expensive uh, racing kit. You know what I mean? So you know it's not cheap, man. Gundams started out cheap. You know, before the pandemic, but then the pandemic hit and then, you know, everybody in their lost mind decided, well, let's just raise the prices of Gundams since everybody's buying them because they're staying inside, bored with nothing to do. So let's milk that money. You know, so everything has gone up. Nothing is, oh, it's got a really cool bookmark. And it was placed in the Gene Stealer cult. I don't know if they're trying to tell me something, but I know I do not like Gene Stealer cult games with that. Stop it. Legion of Votan. You get cool little details about each army, and then you get some obviously some miniatures showing you, you know, that, showcasing that army. Look at that, yeah, big neck. That's nice. I don't even like the necrons, but that that's a cool picture, you know. And the rules. Here we go. Here we go. This starts. What page is this? Damn you, game for a trap. Where is the page number? Oh my god, I'm so blind. It's it's here somewhere. But all right, let's let's core concepts. Okay. Battle round. Okay. Command phase. Okay. Movement phase. See how easy that is? Transports. Shooting phase, making attacks, weapon abilities, smoke weapons there, mostly Imperial, charge phase, fight phase, and Doing this to prove a point, guys. I want a sec. Dang it! Got my play. Dang it! Gee, when that happens. Yeah, here we go. All right, here we go. Data sheets, deployment abilities, stratagems. <sighs> I. I didn't like stratagems in the first in in eighth and ninth, but supposedly they they brought they brought them down from the amount they had before they got rid of a lot of them and na like narrowed it down to like core rules. So like a lot of special rules now are like uh, you know universal special rules, which was like what it was in like fourth edition, fifth edition, and then it changed in sixth and seventh. Uh, strategic reserve terrain features. This is cool. I'm glad that they're including terrain again because it's, it is an important part of the game. And I mean, come on, who doesn't like playing on a beautifully decorated table? Example of a battlefield. Look at that. That's a big ass battlefield. Mm, Mars. Aircraft. Yeah, boy. Master your army. Missions. All right, that's the core rules. That's it. Under this giant book, this is the core rules. 
Then you get into Combat Patrol, which is, is a new addition to the game, and I really like this. This is where you guys who are veterans, who are really itching to get your buddy to play, this is where that shines, because you pick up a Combat Patrol, and boom, you're in. There's there, You don't need nothing else, obviously, besides rules, but you're in. And even if your friend doesn't want to, you, I mean, a veteran player will most likely, and I'm not speaking for everybody, right? But I'm I'm pretty sure a vet player will most likely buy a couple combat patrols of different factions just to have something for their buddy to play when they come over. Because who, I mean, look, I've been playing for a really long time, okay? I've been collecting Tyranid since 2000. And I got tired of them, like, maybe 2004, 5. And not that I got, I didn't get rid of them. I just, I just got tired of painting Tyranid. So I got into something else, you know what I mean? And then I got into something else. And I just picked up these different armies here and there. And I stopped for a while. I think fifth, after 5th, I stopped because 6th and 7th were really bad in my opinion. 8th came out with Death Guard and I was like, all right, I, I, I love the Death Guard. I love their lore. I love the theme. I love everything about them. I even had the original pewter miniatures from them for them, you know, in my chaos, my starting chaos army. But once they came out, I was, that was all in. But the combat patrols, like I said, this was a great way for people to get started in the game without throwing too much money at it. $140, $130. Come on, that's, you're investing in your time, you know, your, your, your enjoyment. You know what I mean? Now, a vet player, it's a great opportunity for you to paint something different. You know, if you always wanted to paint orcs, so I love orcs. You always wanted to paint orcs, but you didn't want to, like, dive into a whole army. Combat Patrol is the way to go, man. You know? And, and, and you're you're getting the most out of it because you're getting to play a different army. You're also... Well, you're getting to build and paint a completely different army that that you're not used to painting. So you, you're stretching your skills. You know what I mean? You're, you're flexing those muscles. You know? And the shadow descends. I guess this is just more fluff and artwork. Let's see. Yeah, because that's it. That's it for the rules. Great artwork. Great. Oh, my God. Now, and then a showcase. Of course. Of course. Showcase. Imperial Fists. So I have an Imperial Fist army. I have a Tyranid army. I have a huge chaos army, you know, like big Death Guard, then Thousand Sons, then Crimson Sabers, and then Black Legion when the new min miniatures came out, and then Chaos Knights because I just I I had to have knights. I have Imperial Knights too, but I use them as Renegade Chaos Knights. Crusade rules, okay. I think this is like campaign stuff. I I never played Crusade. I never never did that. But I'm wondering, I, I believe that's a campaign thing. Yeah, it says, yeah, you're right. Okay. That's cool. There's a lot in here. Okay. But again, it's it's not, this. all this is not necessary to play this game and to introduce people to this game. My biggest thing is the introduction, right? It's the first impressions mean everything to people. Right, that's you only get one chance to make a good first impression, you know. And this already comes with negative dogma. This already you mention 40k, and you already got people rolling their uh, they're rolling their eyes, they're sighing out, br br like their soul is sighing out of their bodies. Here we go, you know. So you've got you got that one chance, man. You got one chance to make a pitch, you know. Uh, so you, I think you got to do it right. And well, this is a great box set for new and veteran players. I believe it's it's better. You know what I'm doing? That's the damn thing. I think it's better for veteran players, not for new people, because 
maybe the command edition is probably better for the or the you know like the elite or the command edition probably better for new players or even the the recruit the recruit version because that's really small investment um but that's skewered towards space marines and tyranid right so again combat patrol to me is the best way to start this game if they're ready to, to jump in and if not it's something you want to do for you know yourself like you get two combat patrols or you create a combat patrol from your already existing army which you can do and then you know maybe get a different like eldari if you want to try something different you want to fight against something different you get some eldar you get some chaos space marines or something something that'll you know your buddy says well i don't know if i you know if i can afford all that stuff and you say okay well i have armies you come try it out and see what you think you know um again this is great for me for me I'm a veteran player but it's not good for a new person and if you slam this down on the table I promise you they've already locked their mind into no way that's just way too much unless they're you know savvy and they've already done their homework and they've already researched a lot of stuff and oh man I think I want to play elves or, or orcs or something you know what I mean then getting to getting them into their first game of Warhammer 40k is, is easy then again you can just use your army or you know go to a gaming shop and let them see if they can try it out there or you can go to target if you're in america and get the uh the box at space marine uh the board game which ties to this because it's it's one space marine versus 20 tyranid and it's a great board game but it's also a great starter set for people to just cut their teeth on the game right so if this kid knows let's say your buddy knows he wants to play necron because he just likes this, the look of the undead robots, right? And he doesn't, he just, he's not sure about the investment yet because he hasn't played the game. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, if someone comes informed to you, they're going to already be anxious to play. But whatever. You get that Space Marine box, say, hey, here's the game. You play the game. You show them the rules. They cut their teeth and say, okay, I'm in. Then they'll go make the investment to the Necrons. But if you break this thing out and you break these miniatures, all these miniatures, he's going to be overwhelmed because he's going to be like, whoa. I did not realize it was going to be that big. Technically, these two boxes probably are a little bigger than combat patrols. But, I don't know, maybe not. I'll, when I'm done reading the rules, I'll know if those are combat patrols or not. But I think they might be. But it, it seems like you're getting a lot for combat patrol. But anyway, it, it, this, is, this is a great box set. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, It's a great box set to get into 10th edition for any veteran player who's looking to either change to Space Marines or Tyranid, or maybe to expand their, their Tyranid army or expand their Space Marine army. Well, there you go. Or this is the only introduction to them, and they just want to just have something to... That's it. Like They're just buying this box set, and that's it. They're not going to buy anything else. Then that's cool. The only thing you need is dice and measurement. You know what I mean? And then you're good to go. So I think the Leviathan box is great. But let me build these models... And we'll get to the showcase, and then I'll give you my totally final results. All right, guys, sit tight. All right, so here it is. This is the entire contents of the Leviathan box for Warhammer 40k 10th edition, and I finally got it done. Um, this is a lot of models, and I mean, I'm not complaining. It's it's They're awesome. I mean, I have a few things, but... Um, yeah, this is it. I mean, you've got so much stuff. You know what I mean? You've got your captain, you've got a lieutenant, you've got your librarian in Terminator armor, uh, you've got your Vanguard veteran squad, you've got your Terminator squad, and then you've got your Infernus squad. Uh, and then back there, there's the Apothecary and the Dreadnought. Now, my only real complaint about this force, per se, is that there are a lot of elite choices uh and i'm not i don't think in 10th edition it really matters right now until the codex has come out or whatever but these are a lot of elite choices like these are veterans these are veterans and then these guys are the the top hqs or all three of them are hq choices and then you've got the inferno squad which is probably a frontline troop you know because they, they're just carrying flamethrowers so i mean they're kind of heavy flamethrowers but still and then you've got the Apothecary, which is, again, another, uh, I want to say, veteran or elite choice. I think he's a veteran choice, yeah, because I don't think he can lead an army. Um, and then, obviously, the Dreadnought for the uh, heavy support. 
you know, he's all the way there in the back, which is which is kind of cool. You know, he, he, it's they're reminiscent of the old school dreadnoughts with the the, the weapon arms. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of kind of interesting. It's got the redemptor body though. Um, and I'll bring that a little closer for you guys to see it. Now on this side, yeah, I don't know what the neurogaunts do, um, but you've got an HQ here with the uh, prime, the Tyranny Prime. The Neuro Tyrant is an HQ. Okay, so you got two. And then you've got, I think the Neurogaunts, I want to say they help with the Synapse. Okay, then you've got the Termagants, which is a front line with the Ripper Swarms, which is another front line. Back there, you've got the Barb Gaunts, which I don't know if they're front line or not, but they carry a pretty good weapon. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty decent. Um, the Carnifex, the Screamer Killer, obviously is Carnifex. It's like what would be considered heavy support, and the Psycho Flange. I don't know what that categorizes. It's probably heavy. But I don't know. And then the Von Ryan leap Leapers over there, those guys would be considered like an elite choice or a veteran choice. So that's that's a bit more rounded out, in my opinion. But this one, I'm you know, I don't know. I mean, it could be considered maybe it's a combat patrol. I don't know. That would be a pretty big combat patrol. But you could probably break it into one if 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 it's a list. You know what I'm saying? Um, or you can play. I'm. I'm you can play this army, I think, in a just general game of 40k. But I think if you were to play like a tournament or match play, you probably would have to have some more front lines before you could field this whole force like this. Um, complaints or pros, you get a lot of models, right? You're getting a lot of plastic in this box. Yes, it was kind of expensive, but look at the armies you're getting. You're getting a good start to either one of these two armies. And there are so many Space Marine options, I can't even tell you how many lieutenants there are. You know what I'm saying? They love lieutenants. They make more lieutenants than they make captains. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> obviously you could have more than one lieutenant, but you can't have more than one captain, right? Or whatever. Um, well, you can you can if you have detachments, but whatever. It, it's it's a decent starting force for any Space Marine player. You just need to probably get a couple other things, and obviously your tastes will vary, right? So if you want a tank, or if you want, you know, some more some heavy support troops, like guys with heavier weapons, things like that. Decent size, you know. The models look great. These these guys are so detailed. They they look great. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're so dynamic. They're posed really well. You know, I, you, you you can't go wrong with this box set. It's pretty good. If you don't have termies, that's even better. You know, my biggest con... Okay, and it's not, believe it or not, it's not monopose. I, I, I do not mind. I've said it before. I don't mind monopose. Because when they release box sets of all this stuff, you can pose them however you want. So you can have two of the same squad, but look completely different. But I, I don't mind the mono pose. I just, I wouldn't buy them twice. Like, I wouldn't get another set of these guys, because that's going to be the same exact guy. Unless I'm putting him in a different army. But um, my big beef, big con with this set is the Terminators. Yes, they're pretty good size they're, they're they're only a fraction bigger you know don't don't believe the hype you see on on youtube and, and 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 instagram and all this crap where they show you oh this guy's from 1992 and he's freaking tiny compared to this model this looks gigantic who's on like a vaulted base or whatever it's it's not it's not that serious here you go i'm gonna show you real quick this let's see if it let me see well yeah I can go right here booyah here is a normal run of the mill fan uh, the the original space marine the original plastic space marine you just glue the gun on and the backpack that's it right so here they are how much bigger you know what i'm saying like he's big compared to this little guy right he's he's pretty big looks good but when you pair him next to a primaris he don't look so big you feel me? Like they, it looks like they made the 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 legs fit the Primaris size, but they didn't make the torso bigger like a Terminator torso should be. They should be bulky and look like they're hulking, like hunching over because it's so heavy, right? It's a tactical dreadnought suit. 
It does not, in my opinion, they're, they're big and it's cool. If you don't have Terminators, grab them. You know what I mean? If, especially if you have a, a generic army that you're, you're going to stick them in, go ahead, pick them up. There's nothing wrong with them. You know what I mean? But know that they're not that big. They're very plain, right? Like these guys, one, they're monopose. Okay, whatever. I don't care about that. But they're very plain. There's nothing. You got maybe a little bit of ribbons, you know, or, uh, you know, some some kind of markings. But they're very, very plain. Now, they just released the Dark Angels Deathwing Knights. Now, those guys look like Dark Angels. They have all kinds of iconography. And whoever's going to paint those is going to be frustrating. Because, you know, there's a lot of stuff to paint. But they look like Dark Angels. That's that's good. You know what I mean? You can't really... I mean, this guy's cool, but he's, you know, he's got an auto cannon. So, and I know that they like using auto cannon. I think it's like an emphasis on auto cannons when it comes to Terminators. But, you know, they sh Terminators, in my opinion, should be able to use any heavy weapon option they, they, they can use, like a heavy plasma or a heavy, or even a LAS cannon, because they're tactical dreadnought suits. They're just smaller dreadnoughts. So that's that's my only thing, but that's that's a game thing. But model wise, <clears throat> they're decent, but they're not all that. You know what I'm saying? Like they they it's not like they they butter my bread, so to say. You know, or, or flim my flams, whatever. Veteran squads pretty cool. The Vanguard veteran squads pretty cool. They all have different weapon types, which is kind of cool. And I mean, I know you can arm them all differently. But they're just, you know, they're again, they're those guys are very plain, not like the sword, the sword, um, uh, the sword and shield veterans that came out not too long ago. Those guys are super detailed, you know. In the uh, um, the Necron, the Necron and Space Marine box, can't remember, I can't think of the name right now, but you know what I'm talking about. Those guys look really well done, really well detailed, and these guys just look, meh. you know what I'm saying? Like they're just like, man, I'm here. I got my bolt rifle, you know, this one, I got, I got my heavy bolt rifle, or the heavy bolter, I think that's a heavy, yeah, it's a heavy bolter, you know, so that's, that's it, everything else went together great, the models are easy to put together, they're, they're simple, you, I would glue them, they're push fit, some of them, but I would just glue them, because save yourself the headache, it's, it's not worth, you know, whatever, losing bits, unless you're going to convert, whatever, do your thing, these guys, pros, I mean, I would say, Again, if, if you're not a Tyranid, if you don't have Tyranids, this is a great start. If you do have Tyranids, this is a great filler, especially with the new models, right? Like, these guys I could deal without. Because of these guys, I have well over 100 Termagants. And I I don't know, like, maybe 10, 20 rip. I can't remember. Like, me, like, 10 Ripper Swarm bases now. You know, it well, my army's apocalypse size, but nonetheless, these newer models are nice. The Neuro Gaunts, the Barb Gaunts, the, the Van Ryan Leapers. Now, the Van Ryan Leapers, I got to read their rules because I'm not sure if they're just lictors with a fancy name or they're actually special. If they're special, then I will hold my tongue because if they're not special and they're just regular old lictors, then then that's going to be a problem because like i said i already have them they're an expensive elite unit I'm, i don't field a lot of them normally in the game because they just don't they just and this is not like a meta thing but i've never found lictors to be useful like they've always even in their sneakiest spookiest best spots to hide they still get spotted they still get blown to pieces it's just like yeah that guy was like 70 points ah, he's not you know what i mean like each one is it's not worth it but whatever we'll see the Carnifex, all these models went together well, if I hadn't said that. They went together well, easy, put together, whatever. Uh, the, let me just go with the Prime. The Prime, I have one already. I have a Tyranny Prime because the last Tyranny Warrior box set released came with the bits to make a Prime. But this is a winged Prime, okay, which is kind of cool. Now, if you picked up the Forge World Wings for your Warriors, you could make Strifes which I had a long time ago. I picked them up because I was like, I want flying Tyranid guys. I think that would be cool. And I put them together. So I was like, oh, that's cool. I got a, a, a group of stripes. Like, I think I have two of them, two groups. Um, one assault and one like shooty. And that guy, just this, he just kind of like brings them together. You know what I mean? It, it really ties it together. You put that with a flying hive tyrant, some gargoyles. You know what I mean? You've got yourself a, a, a really good flying army, which is a fast-moving army. 
and they're still tearing it, you know. So yeah, they they blow up quick, but they're still tearing it. So he's still a warrior, and he still does what a warrior does. He just can fly now, which is very cool. Um, the barb gaunts and neuro gaunts, like I said, they're new. The psycho flange is new. The neuro tyrant is new, which is really cool. Those guys are definitely great added to any veteran army, and really cool to add to a, a to start a new army. The screamer killer. Hmm. I don't like it. I'm be straight up honest. Uh, I believe they could have done way better with the posing, um, which I'm still debating. I'm still debating on cutting those limbs and and bringing them in closer because I just don't like. He's you know he's just saying ha ha ta da I'm here you know what I mean and that's cool it's a cool pose it's exciting but. That guy's going to be impossible to transport. I'm going to have to hold him in my hand whenever I go somewhere because he's so gigantic and so unwieldy that, that he's just not going to fit anywhere. You know, unless I make a special case for just him, which is stupid because the old Carnifex kit, you could make a Screamer Killer. I have one already. I already made one, you know, with the old set that, that's nice and tucked in. He's not all sticking out and ridiculous. And, and my biggest beef with the Tyranid in general has always been their height, right? Because they count as these size creatures but by their base. But because they're so tall or so exaggerated, like the, the, the Nero Tyrant and the, you know, th those guys are going to get blown to pieces. Like they're not going to be able to benefit from most cover that you put out on the table because they're tiny. The cover is like man size for made for Space Marines or Imperial Guard. These guys are not going to benefit from that very much. You know what I'm saying? So, and even if they do benefit it, fit from it, the enemy is going to be able to see them from so far away. Like, all right, I'm going to take that guy, floaty guy out. Make the big brain floaty guy. He's he's done now. You you know you're you're down synapse. You know, but like I said, they look great. I think they're very cool. I'm glad I you know I picked it up. And again, the termagants, meh, and the carnifex, meh. You know, I mean, I could have built that shit. Like I have a screamer killer, like I said, and I got so many termagants. Maybe if it was hormagants, that would be cool. But I know how they do, and I know hormagants are worth more because they're better at close combat. But anyway, that's that's my pros and cons. Otherwise, you know, great. Uh, it's a great set of plastic. It's a lot of plastic. So these guys right here take forever to put together. Just just be careful what pieces you use for which ones, because you know that's in, really important. They all are, but. You know, and they only really go together one way, so you're going to be forcing parts that if they're if you're not, you don't got the right parts. But uh, there you go. I mean, I think it's a pretty cool box set. Um, obviously, I got it, and I don't regret getting it. I just there was a few pieces in there that I was questioning, and when I built them, I was like, yeah, I'm not really a fan of that. But it is what it is. I have it. You know what I mean? And I'll add it to my Tyranid army, and I'll add them to my Space Marine army. Although I wish this set would have came with more uh some something other than two veteran squads you know what i'm saying like I, I just i feel like all this veteran and elite stuff is like mm, it's cool it's cool but the, each unit is going to be so expensive to field when you lose one you're going to feel it it's gonna it's already hard when you lose a space marine because it's like damn that guy costs like so many points his weapon costs so many points but when you lose you know your hqs and your elites they're they're almost double the cost because they can have any kind of weapon or you know what i mean they have special abilities buffs and all that stuff so yeah you just got to look out for that but all right um i think that's a good you know a good way to 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 go about it i mean if you wanted to get if you could still get this box set and you really wanted to get into either one of these two armies it's a great way to go about it sell the other half if you don't like it you know but whatever do do it's it's a great deal it's a it's a really good deal you know because i know that carnifex you know, it's it's a silly monopose, ridiculous guy, but he's going to be expensive. I'm pretty sure he's going to like people are probably selling him right now, but I'm I'm sure that's because there's enough box sets out there. But as soon as those box sets are gone, he's going to be like going through the roof price wise just for people to have a stupid screamer killer. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. And like I said, these guys, they're they're pretty well done. I just wish they were not all veterans. But that's it. That's my opinion on it. Um, it was fun. It was great to build. Um, I think I have some build videos in my vlog. So if you check that out, you might see them in there. Little sneak peeks of them. But um, that's it. Uh, you know, that's the business, man. So as always, like, subscribe, share. 
And you know what? Let me know in the comments if you have an a Leviathan box in and if you put it together and what your thoughts are on it. Because, I, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm on the fence a little. I'm leaning towards good, great deal, right? We're leaning towards great deal, but also like, was it though? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a deal is only good if it's stuff you want, you need, you know what I mean? Or, or really, really want. If you don't need it or really, really want it, it's not so much a great deal like these guys here. You know what I mean? And that big jabroni over there, you know, those two models or units is like, ugh, damn it. Drop down the price of the box for me. You know what I mean? So, all right, let's <laughs> stop ranting. All right, if anything, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.